I want to remind you of one of the questions we looked at before, which requires this skill, but we didn't know how to solve it back then because we were focusing on indices. This is the question. Does anyone remember it? Does anyone remember looking at it? Mrs. Lee showed it to you and you were kind of like, what do I do with that? You're like, I know the indices stuff. I know how to do that. I know how to handle the indices, but this is some breed of equation I don't really know how to work with, right? So we're going to call on this memory, what we've revised here, to deal with this guy, okay? So someone would give us, not the answer, but a first step. What do you reckon? Uh, we Okay, so you can see there's lots of twos here, like there's a there's two twos hidden here, there's one here, and there's an eight hidden here. So there's three of them in there, right? So I could pull out two from the whole thing. Before I do that though, it's kind of a bit tricky to see, like for example, this guy here, don't write this down, because it's wrong. Uh, <laughs> this guy here, right? If I pull two out of it, like this, Why is this wrong? Because it is. Why, why can't I just pull two out? What do you think? Yeah. It's meant to be a bracket for the whole thing. Ah, okay. So, what's really going on is this, right? That's actually what this is, right? So you have to be, it's quite dicey factoring out things from indices and all that. You've got to be quite careful with them. So I want us to think back to when we were solving these equations with indices. What did we do? What was a tool that we often did very, the first thing in order to make the factorization a bit easier? Does anyone remember? When you got all these numbers with different bases, it's awkward, right? What did we do that could help us? Instead of writing them in different bases, we could... Yeah, we could get consistent bases and this would make it much easier to deal with, right? And we kind of already see that here. So I'm going to write 4, and I suggest you write 4 as well, as 2 squared. Okay, with that, I'm getting the same bases I have over here. That's 4, and that's been raised to the power of x. So far, so good. Now over here, um, I also have this 2 to the power of x. Then I'm going to plus 1. What does the plus 1 mean in that index? Yeah, multiply it by 2 one more time. If there was like a, a 3 here, it would be multiplied by 2 three more times, or however many that number is. Okay? So I'm going to use that fact and write this with the same base. right? Even though it's already got a 2 there, you told me that that plus 1 means multiplied by 2 a single time. Right? So are you okay with this and this being the same idea? If you like, you can see there's a 2 to the power of 1 here. And what do you do when you multiply two numbers with the same base? What happens to their indices? You add them, right? Now, Mrs. Lee's mentioned this in one of our earliest lessons last week. We're used to going from this to this, right? You see this, and you're like, oh, I know my index laws, and you put them together. But you're going to have to become just as comfortable going in the reverse direction, and that's what we've just done, okay? We don't actually need that. It's a bit unnecessary. And then I'm just going to leave this guy hanging out at the end. You'll see why in a minute. Why didn't I put that in two cubed? Just hold on. Now, is this starting to look a little more familiar? I started off talking today, we started off talking today thinking about quadratic equations. And this doesn't look very quadratic, there's nothing squared in it. But there is now, do you see this? Do you see that first term? It's got a squared in it. I can make it a little more obvious by taking these two guys, and what does it mean when you raise a power to a power? What are you going to do with those powers? I'm going to multiply them, right? So this is actually 2 to the 2x. 2 to the 2x. Now, I could write that, but it's actually going to be more useful to me just to swap those two powers around. Because in multiplication, 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3, right? So 2 times x is the same as x times 2, so I can switch that order how I like. Why is this form, I'm going to finish writing the equation now, why is this form more useful to me? Hmm, it's still a bit tricky to see. Yeah, do you see it? Very good. The thing I have in the brackets, let me just highlight it for you, right? And maybe you want to do the same. The thing I have in the brackets here and here is the same. It's consistent. So this is just like the quadratic equations we dealt with just now, except there's just a weird thing here. But no big deal. Everything else is the same. So to make it clearer to you that everything else is the same, I'm going to do something uh, which sounds a bit fancy, but really it's just to make it easier for my brain. I'm going to introduce a substitution, a new letter. Um, the conventional one that we use is the letter U. I don't really know why, but it works fine. I'm going to introduce this new letter, 
and I'm going to write it everywhere that I saw 2 to the power of x. So this is an, a substitution I'm introducing. Okay? So instead of this line, everywhere I see 2 to the x, I'll replace it with a u. Okay? So what will I get? u squared. That's the very first term. Are you okay with that? 2 to the x squared. I'm going to write u squared instead. It's a bit easier for my brain to handle. Take away, what comes next? What have I got here? This is two lots of u, right? Two u, very good. And then that minus a is just hanging out there. And we've just transformed this problem, which looked super awkward and weird, into a problem we're really familiar with, right? That x, that u, t, I could call it anything I like, right? I could have made it zacky squared minus 2 zacky minus 8. It just would have taken longer to write, right? And zacky wouldn't be happy about it. Nonetheless, I can still solve this, right? Can we factorize? We're going to do it just like we did here. We're going to have to think of two numbers, and they add up to... What do they add up to? Watch carefully. Think carefully. Oop, sorry, too far. Yeah, that minus sign comes from the right, right? So I want that pair of numbers, they add to negative 2. And I want that same pair of numbers to multiply to... Eight. Negative 8. Don't forget the negative. It's a big deal, right? In fact, it completely changes that answer, as you will see in a second. Can you think of the pair of numbers? Adds to negative 2, multiplies to negative 8. Yeah. 2 and minus 4. 2 and minus 4. Do you, do you agree with that? Do they work out? What do you think, exactly? Negative 2 plus uh, times 4. Negative 2. Okay, now, we've got some contenders here. Okay. Which one is it? Because this is a thing that's easy to confuse. For example, if we just come back to this one, which we were all pretty comfortable with, right? You think of the numbers 2 and 3, and you put them into here. But then your answers end up being the exact opposite of that. So minus signs are a really easy way to, like, hold on, which, which way am I going here? Let's just check this, shall we? If I add these two together here, negative 4 plus 2. Is the final answer negative or positive? Negative. The final answer will be negative. That's the one I wanted, right? If I gave this a go, the final answer will be positive. positive and, and neither of these are. We, we want the negative one, yeah? So I'm going to uh, exclude that one and give this one a go. And this is an important thing to do. You will come up with solutions all the time. You're like, does this work or not? And your ability to check that, not necessarily the ability to get the first one right straight away, the ability to check and make sure you are getting the right one, that's really important.